So I've sold millions of dollars worth of name brand products on Amazon since 2021, and I use Keepa every single day for product research, but most beginner Amazon sellers are just using the basic Keepa features, missing out on hidden gems. In this video, I'm going to show you five secret Keepa features to help you find a lot more winning products fast. And by the way, what I'm about to show you guys today is just scratching the surface. If you want personalized one-on-one coaching directly from me to start or grow your Amazon business in 2025, I'll leave a link down below in the description to apply for my private coaching program. But for now, pull out a pen and paper. I'm about to put you guys on a ton of Keepa sauce. So I get asked all the time, how do you tell which variation sells best on a listing like this that has a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different sizes? And the way to do that is using the first Keepa advanced feature I want to show you guys, which is going to be the variations tab. So if I scroll down here on the Keepa Chrome extension, typically what you see is everyone just talks about the Keepa charts here, which are incredibly helpful, but there's also other features you totally want to be using. And the first one is going to be the variations tab right here to see which colors and sizes are selling best. So all I need to do is go here and hit variations and now what you want to do is you want to pause this video here and go organize your Keepa column similar to this here so that you can easily click here to filter top to bottom by buy box, reviews, new price, as well as new offer count here. And the best way to tell what variation selling best on a specific item is going to be the offer count movement here. So that's going to be how the specific seller counts moving on this variation. And like I said, you do need to organize the columns here. So when you first open your keep a variation tab, I see this with coaching students all the time. It's set to the default. I would recommend taking a second, organize your columns so that you can easily see the buy box price right here the review count, the new price, which can be different than the buy box as we see right here, the lowest price compared to the buy box here, right? As well as the new offer count. So like this listing is a size large, right? This specific ASIN here, and we can see it's got nice offer count movement. Meanwhile, this one sells a lot slower. It's a lot more blocky. So this one, I would want to avoid the white smaller here. Meanwhile, the white large, I can see moves a lot quicker as well. So the key is to understand guys that the sales rank does not change between variations, but the specific Keepa chart does, and the new offer count here is the best way to tell the movement on a specific product. So you want to take the time to organize your keep of variations data right here. And then we can go ahead and see which variations sell best, taking a look at the offer count movement. Some people look at the review count here too, which I think is very helpful as well. The overall review count, I wouldn't really recommend worrying about the percentage here because different variations are created at different times. So say this variation had less reviews than this one. It doesn't obviously, but say it did. Even if it has less reviews, this one would still totally be moving quicker because the offer count movement's a lot better. It just might be a newer variation. But obviously, in this specific case, this one does have more reviews and is moving quicker, which I can see in that offer count movement too. This one has less reviews and is moving slower. The next one I see way too little people taking advantage of is what's called the buy box statistics on this item. So if we take a look at this specific product here, we can see this one's going for $31 in the buy box here on Amazon. And I can see here on Keepa that very recently it was going for only 28 bucks. And a lot of beginner sellers would actually list this at 28 if the buy box showed at 28. Meanwhile, we can see verifiably from the Keepa data that the buy box is going higher on this. And that's a really important thing you guys need to know is that you don't have to price at the buy box. You can price at higher prices if the buy box is going higher because some people would look at this and say it showed 28 in the buy box here, shows 31. But down here in Keepa, we could see it's actually going for 31 a lot more here. There's so many opportunities to price items higher, and a lot of you guys are going to miss out on that if you're not using the data buy box stats here. And that literally, you might open this product and see a $28 buy box here because I can see it's pinballing back and forth between the two. But you would potentially miss the $31 buy box if you're not taking a look at the buy box data here on Keepa, which is going to come from hitting data and then buy box statistics right here. And now we can go ahead and filter it by here and hit last one to see who's winning it most often, most recently. So for example, I could go here overall and hit one and see who's won it most over the past 30 days. Or what I like better is going here and hitting last one to figure out where to actually price this item. So I can see there's literally a seller here that's gotten 12% of the buy box share the past 30 days at 31 in the past hour. And then this seller has gotten 4% of the buy box share the past 30 days that's gotten buy box recently at an average price of 28. So you literally miss out on $3 profit if you weren't taking a look at that if the buy box is reporting lower in Keepa. So don't just worry about the current buy box price. Look at where it's consistently going and there's gonna be lots of opportunities to actually sell items at higher prices and you have to be using the Keepa buy box recent price data to take a look at that. So all you do is hit data, buy box sets and go to last one and filter the most recent layer and you can get a good gauge of that and see if you can actually price items higher which in many cases you can. So don't just match the lowest price. Don't just match the current buy box price. Take a look at the recent highs using the Keepa data buy box statistics right here. 
even though there's people getting buy blocks in the past couple minutes at 28, that doesn't mean you have to price there. The next one is totally one of my favorites here. This is an absolute game changer, guys. So take a look. If we see this item, it's buy boxing at 33 over here on Amazon, right? And we can see recently the competitions went up and the price has trended down. If we take a look over on the Gap website, we can see this is going for $30 right here. But if I scroll down here to the bottom of the Gap website, I can see there's actually a 20% coupon right here that I can go out and use. And Card Bear here has really good discounted gift cards for Gap as well. So if I take a look at this here and plug it in on Selleramp at $30 into $33, this is absolutely not good right here. We would lose 10 bucks a unit. But if I go ahead and take off the 20% right here for the coupon code, and take off 20% for discounted gift cards. Now this gets down to a 19 buy cost, which is still not profitable, but it is historically profitable. As we can see here on Keepa, a lot of people have sold this item at 41. So at 41, this becomes nice and profitable here. It's just not profitable today. And a ton of beginners will see something like this and just scroll and keep it moving instead of what they should be doing, setting Keepa tracking alerts so you can actually get notified when a product becomes good. So all you need to do to check that guys is go to track product here on Keepa and then get notified when this hits like 41 plus, for example, or wherever you want to set it, 41 or more. And then you just get an email notification here and you can literally get notified of that for free forever via your email right there. So I'm a huge fan of the Keepa tracking alerts and cataloging to get notified of different items when they become good. And also, if you guys want a five seller amp features you should be using too, let me know in the comments too. I'd love to make that. There's a lot of hidden seller amp features too you guys should be using as well. But the tracking alerts feature in Keepa is incredibly important to get notified when leads become good on an item like this that doesn't look good at all, but factoring those discounts becomes historically good. It's just not good today, but those Keepa tracking alerts are really helpful. Another pro tip here, you can actually go down here and hit track product and you can go ahead and actually hit advanced and pro and go ahead and get notified of different stats too. So if we go here and hit pro, you can literally get notified on like offer count going down and everything like that. But primarily you'll be doing it based on the buy box price right here. All right, this fourth one is a relatively controversial take here, guys. So if we take a look at this item right here, we can see this item has been incredibly stable over time. So this looks like a replenishable product right here. So if I go ahead and see What's another good way to check if this listing's been a nice replenishable product that people are restocking over time? I can see when they were first listed on it, and that most likely infers that they're restocking it, right? So the way I'm going to go ahead and do that is hit data and then offers here. Now, personally, I would recommend not relying on this sold 30-day data. That's a kind of controversial take and that this is very inaccurate in my opinion. So I would never look at the sold 30 days data. I would just look at the offer count for movement which we can see on this product, you're primarily looking at three-month data, is totally good. Competition's just trending up a bit here. But regardless, I can go over here and organize my columns so I can see the first seen date on this item and see that there's been people selling this for over a year, a whole bunch of sellers selling this for over a year here, which most likely infers that this is a good long-term product that these sellers have been restocking, especially being that this seller's got 600 reviews and 94 reviews and 2,000 reviews right here, that we know these sellers are making lots of profit. So while I don't recommend using the data offers tab to see the sold 30-day data, I do recommend using the offers tab to see the first seen data right here, which is really helpful. And the last keeper feature you totally want to be using, this is relatively confusing, so I want to walk you guys through this in detail, is going to be using Keepa to see how FBM friendly an item is. So as a new seller, you want to be doing merchant fulfilled, but you only want to be doing merchant fulfilled on items that you can actually see other sellers merchant filling. And the way you're going to do that is not just looking at who's on it, but actually using the Keepa buy box stats to identify whether or not merchant fulfilled sellers are getting buy box. So if we go down here and hit data and then buy box right here, I can now see the fulfillment type of these sellers and see that on this specific item, literally every single seller that's gotten buy box share in the past 30 days is FBA. So this would not be an FBM friendly listing. But this item, if we go down here and hit data and then buy box stats, we can see there's a bunch of sellers that don't have the FBA check mark, which means they're FBM sellers. If you want a hard number, I'd recommend if you're going to merch fulfill something, make sure that 20% plus of the buy box share is going to merch fulfilled sellers right here. But that's a really good way to gauge that in using the buy box stats to see how FBM friendly an item is or isn't to see if you can go ahead and list that item merch filled. Now, worst case, you just list it for seven days merch fulfilled and then you send in an FBA. You don't really lose much. 
But if you're going to merge fill something, you do want to make sure that a good amount of the buy box share, 20% plus, is going to merge filled sellers, which we can see in this case, that is, you know, it's well above 50%, in, for example, on here, that is going to merge filled sellers. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. If you have any keep of questions, let me know down below in the comments. Make sure to subscribe for more. Check out the coach program link in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next one.